out your spirit. Pour out your spirit. Be viewing the outpouring for your refreshing and infilling. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit on me. A wonderful day to all of you who took the time out from your busy schedule of doing many things that are also important to viewing today's program the outpouring and on today's program i'm going to be speaking about the sweet holy spirit and my reference would come from three areas one would be john chapter 14 when jesus promised the disciples the holy spirit the second one will be taken from acts which is when the holy spirit actually came on the day of pentecost and the last one would be taken from galatians where we speaking where we're going to be speaking about the fruit of the spirit and walking in the holy spirit so get your note pads if you're going to be taking notes or just settle down and enjoy and be blessed to be inspired be motivated and be recharged by today's program sometimes uh, the scripture text and the message is something that we know and i'm sure you all know what i'm going to be speaking about but uh, we need many times a refreshing and times of refreshing truly comes from the presence of the Lord. The Holy Spirit is the one in the earth with us. Jesus left and he said, I'm sending you the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the one with us, leading us, guiding us, teaching us, being with us. And we could never, we could never speak enough about the Holy Spirit. And um, <clears throat> I'll start with the the gospel of saint john chapter 14 reading from verse 15 it reads and i'm reading from the new living translation as the nlt it says if you love me obey my commandments and i will ask the father and he will give you an advocate who will never never leave you he is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be with and in you. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you soon. The world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Since I live, you also will live. When I am raised to life again, you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me, and I am in you. Those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my Father will love them and I will love them and reveal myself to each of them. And uh, reading down now from verse 23, Jesus said, All who love me will do what I say. My Father will love them, and we will come and make our home with each of them. Anyone who doesn't love me will not obey me and remember my words. And remember, my words are not my own. What I am telling you is from the Father who sent me. I am telling you these things now while I am still with you. But when the Father sends the advocate as my representative, so the Holy Spirit is the advocate that is the representative of Jesus. That is the Holy Spirit. He will teach you everything and will remind you of everything I told you. I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give <clears throat> is a gift 
that the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Remember what I told you. I am going away, but I will come back to you again. If you really love me, you, will, you would be happy that I am going to the Father who is greater than I am. I have told you these things before they happen so that when they do happen, you will believe. I don't have much more time to talk to you because the ruler of this world approaches. He has no power over me, but I will do what the Father requires of me so that the world will know that I love the Father. So in this area here where Jesus <clears throat> spoke about the promise, Holy Spirit and the Advocate is coming, who will be our teacher and comforter and guide. And the Holy Spirit is the gift from the Father. There are two, <clears throat> excuse me, there are two areas that are emphasized as he spoke there. He spoke about love. If you love me, you will obey, <clears throat> you will obey me. He also spoke about, I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. So we have love and we have peace. We have love because we all claim we love God, we love Jesus, but he says, if you love me, then there's something that will follow, and that is obedience. And the Holy Spirit seals and solidifies and brings to the memory all the words of Jesus, teaches us, guides us, because he is the one in the earth with us. So we know of the account that Jesus was crucified, and after his um, ascension, he told them not to go out, not to do anything, but wait for the promised Holy Spirit where they will be endued with power. So the next reading now is from Acts of the Apostles, uh, chapter 2. And it reads, On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them, and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them ability. So you see who gave the ability? The Holy Spirit is the one that gave that ability. So one of the manifestations of the presence of the Holy Spirit on that day of Pentecost was the gift of speaking in tongues. At that time, there was a devout Jew. There, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running and they be, were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. They were completely amazed. How can this be? They exclaimed. These people are all from Galilee and yet we hear them speaking in our own native language. Here we are, and they went on to list all the different persons. So we saw in this area, in this reading, that as the Holy Spirit came, they were endued with power. They spoke, there was a loud noise, they spoke in tongues. Everybody from all different other nations who were present there at the time were able to understand the message that was being shared. And we also know that this this scripture in Acts 2 references back to the book of Joel, where it says in the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit, even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy, and I will cause wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark and the moon will turn blood red before that great and glorious day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So this gift of the Holy Spirit 
is the enablement is for the enablement and the empowerment of the believers to be able to be witnesses of Jesus is to be able to perform miracles signs and wonders that would cause persons to believe in Jesus so that they can be saved the Holy Spirit in our own personal life apart from the empowerment for the work there is an aspect of the Holy Spirit on the inside to teach us to guide us to give us all the tools that is necessary for everyday living there's another part in Isaiah that um, you know was referred to with Jesus Isaiah chapter 11 where it spoke about the different spirits of uh, of the Lord uh, the spirit of wisdom the spirit of counsel the spirit of might and uh, I'll, I'll just read it very quickly before we go into Galatians it says from verse 1 a branch from David's line out of the stump of David's family will grow a shoot yes a new branch bearing fruit from the old root and the spirit of the Lord will rest upon him the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord he will delight in obeying the Lord he will not judge by appearance nor make a decision based on hearsay he will give justice to the poor and make fair decisions for the exploited the earth will shake at the force of his word and one breath from his mouth will destroy the wicked he will wear righteousness like a belt and truth like an undergarment so this was prophesied by the prophet Isaiah that out of David's lineage would come this one and we know this one that came was Jesus Christ and when Jesus left the earth he sent the Holy Spirit to be to empower us to function even as Jesus functioned in the spirit of wisdom understanding counsel might knowledge the fear of the Lord all these things we are empowered by the Holy Spirit to function in and now I will go to Galatians and Galatians Galatians chapter 5 reading from verse 16 it reads so I say let the Holy Spirit guide your lives and this is now we go, we're going into the practical the very practical aspect so we, we, we looked at what Jesus promised we also look at when you know the Holy Spirit was poured out the outpouring on the day of Pentecost we looked at uh, the different aspects of the, the um, spirit's functionality with wisdom, knowledge, counsel, might. And now we're going to look about at the, the practical part that has to do <clears throat> with living. It says here, so I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. We could stop right there, you know, but we will continue. It is important that we let the Holy Spirit guide our lives then you would not be doing what your sinful nature craves the sinful nature wants to do evil which is just the opposite of what the Holy Spirit wants and the Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires these two forces are constantly and if we are true to ourselves we will know because in in our lives on on any and every given day there is always a battle between right and wrong to do what this flesh want to respond how the flesh want to respond to tell somebody you have to give them a piece of our mind to do all these things that the flesh will want but that is not it it says these two forces are constantly fighting each other so you are not free to carry out your own good intentions but when you are directed by the spirit you are not under obligation of the law of Moses when you follow the desires of your sinful nature the results are clear sexual immorality impurity 
lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outburst of anger, selfish ambitions, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, and wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, this is not my words. This is the words of the Lord. And I love the connection now. It says, but <laughs> there is hope. Anytime a but comes in, it's like, well, all is not lost. There is a close. It says, but the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. So as I list the fruit, which I'm sure everyone knows, I want us to just, and I say us because I on any given day must examine my life, my response to situations, my walk to make sure that I am responding in the way the Holy Spirit, the life that the Holy Spirit produces. So this kind of fruit in our lives is love, and we trace back that same love that God says, if you love me, then you will do what? Obey my commandments. So love ties in with that obedience, joy, not complaining and always sad, sour, depressed, frustrated. It says joy, peace. <clears throat> and we come back to peace again because Jesus said, I leave you with peace. One of the first things when Jesus resurrected and he met his disciples <clears throat> on two occasions, he spoke about peace. He said, my peace, I leave with you. So the peace is so important. Because in this world, with all the things that are happening and all the different situations that we have to contend with, if we are not careful, we can really lose our peace. But that is part of the fruit of the Spirit. Patience, kindness, goodness, self-control, faithfulness, gentleness. There is no law against these things. And I'm going to repeat them. And as I repeat them, I'm going to repeat it slowly. I want us to just look within. Look at our lives. See where we may have fallen short. And just as before I, I, I read this, I want to just share a quick testimony. And it has to do with the patience and the gentleness. I thought that I was a person that had plenty patience. And in the latter years of my mom's life, when she required a lot more care, I realized that I didn't have as much patience as I thought I had. And sometimes after interacting with her, and I go back downstairs, because they live upstairs and I live downstairs, and I, you know, I would go downstairs and I would say, Lord, I, I was not as gentle as I should have been, or I didn't function in a place of enough patience, you know? So I want to just remind us that as we relate to each other in our homes, in the workspace, on the street, driving, wherever we relate with other persons, that it is important that our response is always from this place and I will read it again it says this kind of fruit in our lives that is love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self-control there is no law against these so those who belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to the cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Let us not become conceited or, or provoked 
one another or be jealous of one another so it's it's plain and straight in the word of god and i will just touch a little bit on on offense you know because because we are all different because we have different experiences because we all do things differently the Bible speaks about offense and it says when offense comes. It didn't say if, because offense will come. As long as we're rubbing shoulders with each other, we will either offend somebody deliberately, not deliberated, not deliberately by accident without even knowing it, but offense will come. And how will we respond to offense? Is critical because we must, and I say must, we must respond with love, with patience, with meekness, with self-control, with all these things. Because this is how we demonstrate that we are walking in the Spirit. So to walk in the Spirit, and, and when we use the word walk in the Spirit, when we walk, it's a constant moving forward or backward or to the side, wherever, but it's a constant movement and it's a balancing because to walk, we have two feet and we have to balance ourselves as we walk. And using, applying the, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, all these attributes as we walk every day, applying every aspect of this this is how we will be able to be the testimony this is how we'd be able to be the light this is how we'd be able to be that witness to draw people to christ not by sometimes the loud talking or the the long shout and long prayers because a lot of what i found what I noticed recently is a lot of people could pray and pray loud and sh almost shouting down God, but they're not walking with the fruit of the Spirit. And as we walk in the fruit of the Spirit, it positions us in a place of power. We are positioned in a place of obedience. We are positioned to function the way God ordained for us to function function in this world as true representatives of him the holy spirit is very gentle because the word of god also says do not grieve the holy spirit so the holy spirit is easily grieved and the holy spirit can can just pull away right so we must function in a manner that is pleasing to the holy spirit we must function with with all the attributes yes we have the giftings but the character the character is more important than all the giftings because the character that we, we we display as we walk each day in the spirit this will this is this is what will be that light that the world needs to see this is what will be more impactful than what we say what we do and how we respond to offense, how we respond with the brethren, how we respond with our wives, our husbands, our children, our co-workers, our church family, our immediate family, how we respond in any given situation will really show forth whether we are walking in the spirit or we are fulfilling the lust of our own flesh. I attended a meeting quite a few years ago, a training session with the Logos uh, team. And there was this man that was doing the training and he dealt with the book of Colossians. And the verse that says, for we are dead in Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I live, but Christ lives in me. And he said, after he shared that verse, that we are really dead men moving. He said that dead men don't feel. So a lot of times when we all up in our feelings and our emotions and this one do me that and this, you know, I'm offended by what somebody said or what they didn't say. It's, it's, it's us being 
too wrapped up in all that we feel and i'm not, not denying the fact that god created us with emotions they are indicators of whatever would have happened to us in any given day but it's not for us to stay in that place it's for us to climb to a higher level to respond differently jesus was a man of sorrows he was acquainted with grief he was despised he was rejected he was led like the sheep to the slaughter and he opened not his mouth he said not a word and we must reach to that place where we walk in the spirit where we demonstrate love peace joy gentleness patience where we do not grow weary in well-doing where the holy spirit is our advocate our comforter our guide the one that is leading us into all truth you may be viewing this program today and uh, You've never made Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life. I want to invite you to make that decision today. The Holy Spirit is the one that draws men. When the word goes forth, the Holy Spirit is the one that draws to Christ. So I invite you today to make that special decision. Jesus said, anyone who comes unto him, he will in no wise cast out. Jesus said, I'm come that you may have life and you may have it more abundantly. So let today be the beginning of a new day for you where you will walk in the spirit. Some of you may be viewing today's program and you've never experienced or you've never um, had the gift of uh, speaking in tongues. And uh, there are different uh, functionalities of this gift one of it is that you can pray mysteries to God. You can, you can speak out of your spirit, connect with the Holy Spirit and speak to God deep things. And you can build up your own self in your most holy faith. In the book of Jude, it says that building yourself up in the most holy faith by praying in your spirit language. So Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for this program. I thank you for all who viewed today. And for those who are interested in receiving that gift of being able to pray in that unknown tongue, I pray for them today and I encourage them to just open their mouth and allow the Holy Spirit to fill it as they step to new levels in Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Viewers, blessings on you and may you walk in the spirit and not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Shalom. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit. Pour Be viewing the outpouring your for your refreshing and infilling. Pour out your spirit. Pour out your spirit. Oh